Welcome to chapter six, where we're going to get down to the business of creating classes in earnest. But before we do that, we're going to have to handle some mechanical matters. Let's talk about Python for a few minutes. We learned in Python that there are two areas of memory that are important to programs, and they're called the stack and the heap. The stack manages all function or method calls. The heap is the warehouse where objects are stored. Anytime you call a function, what an activation record or stack frame is placed on the stack. And that contains the local variables for that function and their values in a return address that allows it to go back to its caller right where the caller left off. Anytime a function returns, its stack frame is exposed to be overwritten. And then the variables, the local variables inside of it become inaccessible. We've learned that Java has eight primitive types. The four integer types, byte, short, long, and int. And the four other types, float and double, boolean and character. These types all point directly at their values. So if they are local variables in a function, those values are stored directly on the stack. Now you'll note that there's only a finite list of types. There are eight primitive types that behave like this, the largest of which is eight bytes. So you're never storing any large object that's primitive on the stack. Everything else in Java is of object type. And object types work in a manner similar to Python objects. What is stored in, an object, in a variable of object type is the memory address on the heap of that object. So that's how the variable refers to the object. It knows the object's memory address. This is exactly the same as the mechanism that's at work in Python. Now, we haven't talked about strings much, and the reason is strings are an object type. And in many ways, they're, they, they have elements that are typical and atypical of Java objects. And maybe we'll point out the atypical items first. So let's open JShell and have a look. Okay, so string is a type. Now, one thing you will notice is this, that in contrast to the primitive types, string is capitalized. When something is capitalized, when, it, when you see capital letter at the beginning of a type, you automatically know it is an object type. So strings can be big. You know, a string could store your name, which is only a few bytes, or it could store the King James Bible, which is mm, around 4.3 megabytes. That's very big. And you wouldn't want to store such a thing in the stack because the stack has a limited amount of room. If you store, so what happens is you, when you store something like the King James Bible, it's put on the heap. And the only thing the variable keeps is the memory address where that item is being kept. Now here are some things that are atypical of Java objects. A string, should always be initialized like this. You are able to initialize a string. You notice most of the time, you know, when we've made instances of classes, we had to use the key, the new keyword. Strings are an exception to this. Do not use the new keyword in strings. And here is a quick and dirty reason for that. If you do use the new keyword, which you can do, it will create copies. That, that, it can create copies of strings. Why don't you want copies of strings? Well, for the same reason you don't want them in Python. 
strings in Java, just as in Python, are immutable objects. You cannot change them in place. So there is no point in having lots of copies of an immutable object hanging around. They just clutter up memory. So to make a string, you simply say string, and then an identifier, an equal sign, a double quote. Do not use single quotes to bound strings. That's an error. Single quotes are reserved for bounding ca character literals. So string s equals hello. There it is. Now, here's something you'll see that's interesting. In Python, you would go like this to get the letter H. But Java is saying that's an error. An array is required. We'll learn about arrays later. But a Java string is found instead. So to get at the characters in a string, you use Bugs Bunny's favorite method, char at. Okay, that's character at index zero. Indices in strings work identically otherwise to indices in Python. Always think of the indices as living between the entries in the string. So here's s dot char at of one and two. Okay, and you can see that those things are stored right next to each other. Now, if you want to know the length of a string, you just say s dot length. Now this dot operator, you've seen it before. And here's my little grammar lesson. Dot is the genitive case. Dot indicates possession. You are calling s's carat of zero. If I make another string here, and I say, say goodbye, you'll notice that I got a G. Why? Because this method call depends not just on the, on the things that are passed in, but also on the state of the string. Now, we haven't really talked much about state yet. State is what an object knows. What does a string know? It knows its character sequence. So this method can depend on the state of the string, and in fact does. Because when I call s's char out of zero, I get an h. Because s is pointing at hello, and t is pointing at goodbye. And these things... What's actually being stored by S and T is not the strings. They're not storing the strings there. They're storing the memory address of the string. And so Karat knows where to go to find that object. It goes and finds the object and obtains the information that you need off of the heap. So length for a string gives you the length of a string. Now, one thing you're seeing here when you make a string, this right here is what I call a tacit call to new. And by tacit, I mean it's an unwritten call to new. This rarely occurs in Java. I'm going to show you one other place where it does occur. Now, we have our friend integer, which is a primitive type, int. Each primitive type has something called a wrapper type. And the wrapper type for int is integer. And I can go like this. That is a tacit call to new. In fact, that is the preferred way to create a capital I integer object. What actually is happening here is this is called auto boxing because what is happening is your bare naked five which is the bit pattern bunch of zeros followed by a one zero one is wrapped inside of an object an integer object and an integer object knows one thing it knows the integer it's storing okay so your 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 your, your 
your bare naked bit pattern is now promoted to an object. And it got put, you can think of it as being put in a box. And is a box that holds the bare bit pattern. So the bare bit pattern isn't hanging out there all by itself. So that is a tacit call the new. Later on, we'll talk more about the wrapper classes. They have some pretty useful things inside of them that you're, you're going to find handy when you're programming. Okay, now with, as with strings, I do not recommend, in fact, it is deprecated to do this. You don't want to do this. You should always do a tacit call to new with this integer type. Now, it didn't complain, but this is deprecated. And, and later on, when we study the wrapper types, you'll, in fact, see that it is. Cause it's and it's really not necessary. It adds a bunch of boilerplate to add no meaning to what we are doing here. So now we've seen that we can get characters out of strings. We can get their lengths. Now, if you've ever watched late night TV, you've probably seen infomercials. And one of the phrases that you always hear in these infomercials is, but there's more! Which I'm going to turn around and say, but is there more? Now, one of the reasons that Java has had a long and productive life is that the documentation for Java is second to none. It is awesomely good. And this is the one of the reasons that this language is going to be around a really, really, really long time. Now, let me get my browser out and I'll show you how to find the Java documentation. It's a pretty simple matter. Give me a second to resize and on another screen here. Okay, so I'm gonna transport this across. And you can pretty much go like this. Type Java string API 15. That should be enough. Oh, look. This gets us to docs.oracle.com. Click on that bad boy. Beautiful. And if you did that, you're in here. And I'll also put this link in your in the, in the description of this video. So you can see here, this is the documentation for Java strings. And there's going to be a whole lot of stuff that you're going to find utterly mysterious. And I'm going to tell you for now, don't worry about it. Because what we'll do is we will take an approach to this that allows us to peel away the layers and understand the bits and pieces a little bit at a time. Now let's read some of the things that are in here. It says, so here's a whole bunch of things that make utterly no sense to us. So we come down to this paragraph and it says, the string class represents character strings. All string literals in Java programs, such as ABC in quotes, are implemented as instances of this class. Then it says, strings are constant. Their values cannot be changed after they are created. That's another way of saying they're immutable. Because string objects are immutable, they can be shared. Okay, so you don't, you can have several variables pointing at the same string at the same time and have 100% confidence that none of them can change the state of the string. Okay, and here they give some examples telling you how strings can be used. Okay, now, here's where we're going to go next. So you might want to read through a little bit of this on your own, but come down here. There's something called the constructor. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to go to this thing called the method summary. 
The method summary is the most useful part of this documentation when you are a beginner and probably the most useful part of this documentation to you, period. It lists all the methods. Look, so look at this. Strings have lots of different behaviors. Look at all these behaviors. It can be bewildering. And the smart thing to do is to go spelunking. This is how we learn about things. We, we, we do some exploring. And I'm going to help you out here. I'm going to take you through some things so you can see them happen. Okay, so... One thing you'll see, by the way, here, this little search window, it comes in handy. You can type in the name of a class, and, and, and uh, this will search for it. It's pretty nice. Okay, here are a few things that I should point out uh, right away. The organization of Java classes works pretty much like this. There's something called a module. A module is a collection of packages. A package is a collection of classes. This package, java.lang, is the core of Java. Everything that's in java.lang is a core language class. And the nice thing is you don't have to do any import statements. Importing modules in Java and Python, similar process, okay? Works in a similar way, but you do not have to import anything in java.lang. It's automatically imported for you. Okay, so let's uh, let's see some other things that are going on in here. All right, so when you, now one thing you're going to see is in here is you're going to see method summary. Oh. Let's go back up. I want to go I want to go back up a level to the very top. Let's go to overview. You can click on that. Yeah, okay. This tells you some interesting things. It tells you all the modules that exist and there are bazillions of them. Okay. And so we're in java.base. So let's click on that and see what it looks like. And you can see here are all of the packages in java.base, java.io. IO stands for input and output. Java.lang, that's what we're going to focus ourselves on for now. Java.lang is going to be important to us. Contains strings, contains other things. And also java.util will be important to us because that contains data structures like lists that we'll learn about later, okay? So this documentation, it's really rather good. Okay, so now we're in this string class and it's gonna tell us all kinds of happy, hairy things, but let's, let's, let's go look at Karat. Let's go back to the string class. And you'll see some interesting things. You'll notice it'll pop up like that. It's pretty easy to search. And let's go to Karat. You'll notice that the names of the methods are links. So let's click on Karat. Okay, let's see what it says. Returns the char value. So it's, it's telling you the return type is char. Okay, so the return type is a primitive character. Karat int index okay and indices like i said work pretty much like they do in python now it's going to tell you specified by you don't need to worry about that parameters yes the parameters it's describing here the index what is it it's the index of the char value that you're trying to get returns the character at the specified index the first character is at index zero. Throws. Oh, that's new. But maybe not new. Index out of bounds exception. This is a special type of object. It is a cream pie that's being thrown at you. And that happens if you try to access something that's out of range. So let's see that happen. 
So I have my string S here. Here, I know that there's no character at index 100, but I'll do this anyway. And it says exception. Java.lang.string index out of bounds exception. String index out of bounds, colon 100. And then it's telling you where that's happening. Okay? You'll see when, when you're writing a program, when you're writing an actual program, it will tell you the line number where that exception occurred. Okay? So that's a, an exception is a runtime error. The compiler doesn't catch it. Okay? The compiler has no idea what index you're going to call, so it can't possibly catch it. But the Java runtime environment does catch it. So there you go. Now, now you know about Karat. And maybe I'll say a little more here. Yes, let's just say a little more here. Let's go ahead and try to slice a string and see what that looks like. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to go back to my... I'll just hit the back button. Oops, I went too far. Let me go forward to string. Okay. Let's see how we can possibly slice a string. So I go cruising through here, and I find something called substring. Let's go ahead and go, go there and have a look. So look at this. There are two substring methods. And you're saying, wait a minute. This doesn't seem to fit with my notion of reality. But let's try them out, and then we'll see what's going on here. So if I go s dot substring of 1, let's see what it says to do. It says, if I do that, returns a string that is a substring of this string. Oh, and it says begin index. So that's sort of a hint from index 1 on. There's my string. Now, the it also allows you to specify a beginning and an end. So I can go s.substring of, say, 3 and 5. And you see? Index 5 points just off the end of the string. I can't do caret at 5. I'll get a string index out of bounds exception, but I can use it to bound a substring because the indices do not live with the characters. They live in between, just as they do in Python. And if you remember that, you'll be in good stead. And you can see things like this. Watch. S.substring of 2 plus S.substring of 2 comma S dot length. Oops, what did I do there? I did something incredibly silly. Oh, I did something incredibly silly. I should have done this. That was silly. This is not. Okay. If I want the beginning of the string, I'm going to have to specify a zero. And see how it glues together without stuttering? So, now you've seen how to find the Java documentation, okay, how roughly classes are organized, and we'll discuss this in more detail later. And what I would encourage you to do is go into the documentation and play around with some things, like index of. Now, one thing I should mention before going is this phenomenon. I have um, the same method but two different signatures. That's called method name overloading. And that is allowed. You can use the same method name for different methods provided the signatures are different. Now here is a rule of thumb. When you do this, those methods should be closely related to each other. For example, these substring methods are very closely related to each other. Do not just arbitrarily 
overload a disparate collection of methods that do nothing near the same thing because all you're going to do is confuse other people. But this method name overloading is a really nice thing and it will be demonstrated um, later, but uh, we'll, 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 we'll see that later. So I think we'll stop right here and now you know something about the documentation. You know a little bit about strings, and we will talk about them more detail in a future video in this series. And I think I will stop right here.